Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today, I am celebrating completing the owls. This is the first year that I did the owls and I loved it, it was so much fun. So today I'm celebrating by watching Harry Potter all day in the background. I'm making creatures French onion soup, so some clips will be in here of that. And then I wanted to talk to you about what I read. Yeah, so I did a little spread for it. So The Lonely Heart of Mabel Lane was 288 pages and it was for Ancient Ruins class. So it had a heart on the cover or a name, the not a name, the word heart. So Mabel is a 12, 11 or 12 year old girl, it's a middle grade book, and she is searching for her father. She hears she recognizes his voice on the radio because she has heard a voicemail in the past, starts to listen to it without telling her mom, finds out about a way that she can actually go meet him, and goes kind of on this road trip adventure with some quirky characters. I thought it was really cute, very heartwarming. Um, it actually ended in a way I liked. Like, it ended good, but it wasn't all wrapped up in a perfect bow. So I kind of like that because that's how life is. So I really enjoyed that one. I gave it four stars. The next one was for arithmetic class and I read my first manga, so something outside of my favorite genre. And Orange was 523 pages. I love this. I read it all in a day because I was just so absorbed. Um, a girl gets a letter from her future self and has to like try to figure out if it's real and then follow it she's got some amazing friends and there's a budding romance in here but also like really deep issues surrounding guilt and suicide so super good I really enjoyed it I'm gonna buy the second volume as soon as I can and I also gave that four stars the next one was charms and to read a book with a white cover Let's pretend that this is the white version and not the gray one from Book of the Month. But I listened to a, well I read some of it and listened to some of it. A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. I, I really enjoyed this one. Um, I listened to it mostly, I started it the first hundred pages or so on Thursday and then on Friday listened to the rest of it. Um, a girl named Andy Bell was murdered and then her boyfriend was convicted of murdering her but he had committed suicide and so they could never actually get all the details together but he seemed unlikely for a murder so Pip uh, decided for her senior project that she was going to go and follow this mystery so she so you have some of the current story and then you also have her notes and transcripts kind of to go back in time and to talk to people that were there during the murder. I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, there was a couple times towards the end that I was worried the ending was going to be horrible, but it, it worked out, so I really enjoyed it. I also gave this one four stars. Defense Against the Dark Arts was to read a book set on the sea or coast uh, to mimic the Grandilos, and so I chose All the Stars and Teeth, and I really enjoyed this one. It's a theme, if you haven't caught that. Um, it was really good. So a princess, uh, she has to do a trial to kind of become queen to show her power, her magic. And it doesn't go so well. And she's kind of been sheltered by the king, her father. So she runs away and learns more about her country or her 
kingdom I guess you want to say because it's multiple islands and each of these islands have a different form of magic and they have been told that if you use more than one form of magic you are cursed it'll kill you it's bad news and then the royal family so Amora's family is kind of in control of that and the curse breakers and they have this special type of magic that keeps everybody safe so Amora meets up with a pirate and they go on a little adventure and she starts to learn that she doesn't maybe know the truth that her father's been sheltering her and really how all of the magic systems work and what's been going on in her kingdom so really liked it I thought it was a good complete story to start the book and then I'm excited for the you know other books in the series but I thought that it did a good enough job like making you feel complete about this first book because sometimes first books either lead up to the rest or leave you hanging like truly devious so I really enjoyed this one also gave it four stars the next one was potions and to read a book under 150 pages for a shrinking solution and I read the second volume of Skyward really liked it um, it's been a little while since I read the first so I kind of have had to like re 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 remember Jesus <laughs> I had to remember what was going on um, but there's these big huge giant bugs in this one and uh, they were so freaking cool so I really liked that it inter introduced some new characters but you still got your old this whole world um, is so interesting so essentially uh, gravity is gone so they completely live in a world where they're just floating and they're currently in Chicago and her father tells her that there's a way to fix things so she's trying to follow his journal and figure out that way but then in the meantime there's the guy that worked with her dad that's bad is trying to chase her down and then she runs into these other people who live in the woods and they deal with these big huge bugs and so there's a whole situation with them too so really liked it thought it was great I love the graphics I want to own all three the second and the third one I read now digitally but I think they're great I think it's a really fun dystopian -ish story so really enjoyed this also gave it four stars and then the last one I read for Transfigurations and this was my Animagus, Animagus lecture for shape sifting. I had no idea when I started this what it was all about. I love Sarah J Mass. I know that you're either you like her or you don't so that's fine because everybody has their own opinions but I do love her. I love her fantasies and this I enjoyed. It was huge. <laughs> It's 803 pages. It's huge. Um, there was a lot going down in here. There was some times where I was less interested than others, but I was pretty intentive through the whole thing. I really enjoyed Bryce. I thought she was a super rockin' main character. Badass, you know the normal Sarah J. Mass girl. She's badass, was rough around the edges. Not perfect. Um, it did, you know, the last 200 pages, like everybody says, that's when you really get invested and it picks up. I never cried, and honestly, I can't fully figure out where people are crying. There's a couple of parts where I was, like, kind of sad, but, like, definitely not crying. I don't know. So, I don't know. Um, I was frustrated, like you're supposed to be. Um, but I, I liked it. I liked the Faye... Um, guys, her brother and his friends, I really liked them. Um, Hunt was good, Micah was interesting. Um, sometimes I was a little overwhelmed with the backstory and the, all the names, but I thought it was really good, really enjoyed it. I ended up giving it five stars. Definitely, probably will figure out how I don't have to reread this to remember it because I'm so bad at that. I think when you read so many books, it's hard to remember everything, but figure out how I can collectively remember all of this so I can just start the next one when it comes out. But yes, very excited about Crescent City. So I completed The Owls by reading 2,535 pages. It was super fun. I cannot wait for the newts and curse breaking. Here we come. This girl is on a roll. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was just a fun little way to reward myself for 
working hard on those owls and I will catch you guys in the next video.